what's up youtube welcome back to the channel and in this video i'm going to be showing you how to create this seamless photo frame transition and i find it an interesting way to capture the attention of viewers and also to showcase some of the photos which were taken either on a set or maybe you can also pick screen grabs from the video and use them to create this transition on my timeline i have two clips and I'll try to transition between them with the photo frames that we saw earlier on. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, since I wasn't the one shooting this video, I'll take some of the screen grabs. So what I mean is that I'll take some of the screenshots from this video. Let me get the full video right here, quick. So I've dragged part of that video beside so that we can pick a few screenshots to use for this transition. Uh, if you don't know how to pick a screenshot, head right here. Make sure to be positioning your cursor where you need it to be captured. You can find this little camera which represents an exporting frame option. And if you cannot find it, there is this plus button. You can always find it here among these other tools and buttons. So I'm going to take a few screenshots and export them to my desktop for now. I will repeat the same but for other sections of the clip maybe i will export right here let's name this one a frame two and i'll export the last one real quick i'll export this one to frame three so now guys i'll delete this part and now we have these two clips to work with eventually now okay now here are the three frames that we exported from adobe premiere and you're going to be using photoshop to customize them remember our dimensions on that is a 1920 by 1080 sequence so for the sake of uniformity well let's open photoshop and you can create a new document on the right hand side uh, near film and video you will find a 1920 by 1080 document and you can create that okay now let's unlock this layer you can delete it but let's first create one blank layer before that and let's delete the background layer now we're starting on a fresh canvas first thing we want to create the frame for the photo so you want to create a new rectangle you want to have a rectangle with a white fill so here's a new rectangle i'll switch back to my selection tool so now you can see it has a stroke let's disable that and let's go for a fill let's activate the white fill all right i'll hit ctrl t to free transform this layer and i'll make it it's it's not good you can try placing it centrally uh, just make sure to have clicked on this layer hit ctrl a and you'll see matching hands it will mean that you have selected everything and you can use these controls to position it perfectly with this white background here, now we want to add something that will give it some raw texture for this purpose of the tutorial. You want to get a paper texture which looks like a wrinkled paper. Uh, you can head over to pixels and you can type something like paper texture and you can see the variety of options that you do get. For now, we don't really have to download this one. I have good paper textures on my preset pack. You can find it i link it right below and i'll drag this one here it's a crumbled paper texture i'll drag and bring it to photoshop here you can see the paper texture is here i'll just scale it up quite a bit okay now i'll accept the transformation so what we want to do we want this texture to only occupy the area within this rectangle shape below and we'll do that by right clicking here and creating a clipping mask that's it now we have the frame we can hold shift and click on both layers and match these layers let's name this photo frame with this photo frame that we have now it's time to drag one of the photos frame one and i'll drag it to my photoshop i'll scale it down and then right after scaling it down i won't go so much i'll accept these transformational changes i'll take my rectangular marquee tool and i'll select the area within this photo that i'd like to retain i'll click uh, within this area and then i'll invert this selection by hitting ctrl shift i and then i'll delete of course i need to rasterize this layer to be able to delete and now here it is so we can have this photo right in the center and then to cap it all yeah from the texture pack i'll go for the tips you can find these tips also you can google them around but it's so hard to get one that can work for this so i'll drag it to my photoshop i only need one tip from all of these so okay let's lock these other layers first i lock this and also this other one 
so that they cannot be moved at all. Now for this layer above, I'll go for this polygon lasso tool and I'll go around this one here. Now that I'm done, I'll hit Ctrl J and I'll have a layer with only that. So let's disable this other one here. And now we have this here. We'll hit Ctrl T and position it however we want it to look like. That's okay for me. And now for the final bits, we'll be replicating the same thing with all other photos, but we can add a little noise to this photo. Make sure to have clicked on this layer. And now let's create some noise. You can go to filter and right under noise. You can add noise. 8 to 9 is okay. So it gives it that crunchy feeling. I'll export this. I will export this as a PNG so that I can have all this other transparency enabled. We go to file, export, export as. You know when exporting a PNG, make sure transparency is enabled. And let's export it now. Now that we've exported that one, I'll hide this layer and then I'll bring another photo from the ones that we took. And we'll basically do the same thing. Scale it down just quite a bit and then take a rectangular marquee tool. Okay, first you can right click on this, rasterize the layer. And then let's select the portion of the picture you want to pick. Control Shift I and hit delete. And now I can scale this down. And one of the tricks about this event to pull it off, it's always important, now I'm zoomed in, it's important to leave some space on these edges. It's one of the selling points. You can have space here, space here, and here, here. And you can remember what we did with this little sticker. You can always use a different sticker if you want to from the ones that we dragged. Let me try using a different one now. I'll go with my polygon lasso tool. Now let's take this one for example. I'll go back to my selection tool. I'll move this sticker right here up. I'll scale it down quite a bit and rotate it to give it an uniform look. And that's it. And right after that, we can do the same thing we did. You can be on this layer and then go to filter noise and then let's add some noise. That's okay. Now, on this picture, we've added some noise. We've given it a different look for it. We can also give it something extra. We can add some text right here, something which is vague, like Lofi, just anything, really. I'm not being specific. Just something to add flavor to this. Now, let's export it. Okay, I'll delete the text now. I'll hide this other layer once again, and then let's import the last photo to work with. Again, rasterize this layer, go to my rectangular marquee tool and select the portion of this photo that I want to keep. I like, I like this left hand side up to here, control shift I, delete, then use my moving tool, free transform this layer and then make it smaller. Yeah, like that. And the last step as we did, just go and add some noise. Now I feel like I want to add some text here. Let me add some little text. I leave that at that and then let's export this one. So we are done working on Photoshop. Now we'll be using the frames that we just exported to create the full effect. I have the three of them. I'll drag them into my Premiere Pro timeline and I'll place all of them just before this transition starts. Now, before this second clip comes in, right at the cut, I'll bring this first photo and then I'll hold shift, go once, which means that we've gone five frames later on. And then we can drag the second one, sorry. You can drag the second one like this and then go five frames, hold shift and then you can hit the arrow key to the right. And now we've gone from one, two, three. Now the first thing that we'll do on this photo that comes first, right on our effect controls, we'll add keyframes for scaling and rotation. Okay, so let's make sure the scaling starts somewhere small. And then we haven't added a keyframe for position, but I need this to be slightly on the left, first of all. Somewhere like that. 
but then we are putting keyframes for scaling and rotation and then for scaling we can start right here at i'll start at 69 and then i'll go 25 frames later on and also for the rotation we can begin at somewhere like we can rotate it to the left or the right but let's start somewhere at negative 15 degrees remember we've added two sets of keyframes for scaling and rotation now we need to go forward 25 frames i'll hold shift and hit my right arrow key five times one two three four five don't worry about anything that happens we are focusing on here and then this keyframe you can turn it from the scaling from 66 or from 69 to somewhere like 78 like that and then the rotation could go from negative 15 degrees to something like something subtle doesn't have to be a lot from negative 15 degrees to like even negative 9 okay so this was 15 this was 25 frames between these two now let's click the second frame and let's animate it also i'll try squeezing it to the right first and then i'll scale it down okay now that we can start there we can toggle the animation for scaling and rotation we can begin the rotation for this somewhere like positive 15 degrees you see for this other one we started with negative 15 and right now we start with positive 15 degrees and then let's go 20 frames now instead of 25 frames let's go 20 frames hold shift and my right arrow key four times one two three four so you can make it come from 15 to 7 degrees just something small and then the scaling could go from 72 to something like 78 or 80 like that okay now let's animate the last one which is this frame at the top which will be our middle section that's why i tried to preserve it first let's scale it down first of all yeah we can scale it somewhere like 74 it's about your eyes and what you see let's toggle the animation for scaling and rotation okay we can begin the scaling at 74 maybe and you can also fix the rotation it could also start by even 15 degrees 10 degrees but it's central so i'll put it at 10 degrees okay and then let's go 10 frames for the first one we went 25 frames for the second one 20 frames and for this one the last one i want it to be 10 frames and you'll see exactly why one two 10 frames this is the main photo so this can get bigger than the rest of them all and then the rotation should go up to zero so that it can be straight at the end and then right after there they should appear like one two three everything that you've done let's nest this so we have a smaller place to work with and now we can drag this after the three photos appear that's when the transition begins and now we can cut to the next like that now it's only a matter of polishing this animation for this moments that a photo will appear we can always add some brightness but the advantage of having nested these we can add something between or beneath these photos i'll drag one of the screen grabs from that video i'll take the screen grab here and i'll drag it right here so that you can see what i'm talking about so here is a picture this is just a picture I'll make it small in terms of the length it occupies and I can bring it beneath this clip. And if we replay it, you can see the small difference that it makes. Yes, it gives the place a good structure to rest on. Now you can see the difference that it makes with another background beneath the photos. It makes the effect sell out. And for the last step for this one, we'll add an adjustment layer come here add a new item and we are going to add an adjustment layer just drag it on top of this let me label it so that you can tell the difference from the rest so this is our adjustment layer from where the cut begins i'll hold shift and go left once so that i can extend this adjustment layer five frames to the left to this other side we'll do the same now let's go to your effects and let's look for brightness and contrast with our brightness and contrast on our adjustment layer, what you want to do for every single 
moment that a photo will pop up you want the whole screen to become sort of brighter but for a very limited amount of time so as soon as this photo comes in and it looks like this i'll add a keyframe for brightness right where this photo has already popped and i'll put it somewhere like 25 okay and then let's go back i'm using my arrow keys i'll go back one frame or two frames one two frames and i can reset it to zero so it goes from zero to a burst of brightness and then we need to make it go back to zero again so from the central point which is the brightness is at 25 we'll go two frames one two and get it back to zero so we'll have that there is also this second photo right here we add a keyframe for brightness okay and then two frames later on we can bump it up to 24 25 and then two frames later on we get it back to zero and this is why i also emphasize to have some space for the adjustment layer as soon as these photos begin popping it's important to also start with giving this brightness a high value so at this point let's give it at 24 and then let's go one frame to the right and reset it back to zero go one two this is where we are at one two once again and then put it back to zero so once the cut is about to begin the screen will have that white flash and then as each photo begins to pop up it will sell the idea better and like that and then as the effect ends we can also add a keyframe for brightness put it at 24 25 go two frames to the left or one frame let's go one frame at least take it to zero after here we are at one and then one frame put it back to zero so as also it ends it will go bright and then go back to normal so that's it guys the only thing that you can do maybe to sell the effect more you, you can add sfx such as camera clicks and sounds i have some here Yeah, that's it. You can add some sound effects as I've showed you. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you've enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can comment if you have any questions or suggestions or any tips that you'd like us to share on this platform. So that's it from me. See you guys next time. Peace.